Well, guys, you just wondered if this might solve your problem that you're looking for. Well, I'll share with you. Every once in a while, I run into a head scratcher that I find an answer for, and I try to share it to everybody else. Now, I like to keep these old vehicles, but they can cause you a real headache. And one of them is the dreaded Code 300. And this old code can mean a lot of things. And what it says is a random misfire, multiple misfires on all cylinders. Well, what could cause that? Well, it has to be something affecting the whole motor. It could be the ignition system, the fuel system, the vacuum system, the exhaust system, or just a sensor problem somewhere, or your computer. Now, it could, you could get really expensive looking for this job. Well, I went the ignition system route, and I'll show you what it was doing and see if this matches your symptoms. So, and if it does, Here's a way to fix it, and I'll even show you how you do it. Well, here's the problem I've been having with the 300 coat. This thing's missing real bad. When it's cold, it's not as bad, but when it really gets hot, more normal conditions, it really misses. You can see it here running. I'll hold it up here high RPM. Watch it, see how it's cutting out? Off and on, off and on, off and on, like it, it can't maintain it. And when it gets hot, it really does it bad, down to 2,000. Now. Just cutting out, cutting out, especially put a load on it. Really bad. Well, that's the problems it's having. And the only problems, it time that it set off a 300, I got aggravated with it getting on the interstate and forced it to it. And that set the 300 code off. And then that makes you scratch your head. Well, I, I'd been working on it a little bit. It'd been a couple of years since I changed the distributor and wire, so I went ahead and changed them. But that didn't help nothing. New distributor cap, new rotary, new plugs, new wires. And man, on this exterior, these last two plugs, they are a challenge to change. But I change them. And I change them every couple of years. And here's the distributor. This is the culprit right here. It's got an ignition module in it that breaks down. As time goes on and it gets hot and it gets worse, it's one that didn't break me down on the highway. But this is the problem with it. And it's just got time and age on it. But it's an intermittent problem. But it's not now. First thing you want to do, you want to change this distributor. It's just a high fire job. You want to mark your markings on it. And what I mean by marking them with a mount bolt, mount the distributor, I marked it right here. You want to scratch it or you can put it in the same place when you take it out. And next thing you want to do, you want to take the distributor cap off. Just unbolt it. And I like to use a little magnet. There ain't nothing worse than dropping screws down in a motor you can't get your hands to. Y'all know that feeling when you work on these things. Well, anyway, lay that out of the way with the wire still on it. And you want to line up your rotary. What I like to do is just bump the motor around till you get it in about this position. And you want to mark it about the middle of your rotary button to the frame of your distributor right there. Mark it. So you want to keep that the same when you put it back so it'll be in time. Won't be no special job. And you got that mark. The next thing you want to do, you want to take your wires apart. Your plug wires to your computer and your sensors and stuff, your distributor. There can be a job in their cell phone snapping. And get that loose. Then you take a number 14 on this one, a number 12, I'm sorry, a number 12 socket number 12 millimeter with a little swivel on it where you can get down in there at that angle to get that bolt loose. Without it, you'd have to take a throttle body loose to get a straight socket in there on it. Well, when you get that broke loose and unscrewed, you've got it marked. Take it on out there that's ready to just come on loose from the thread. Now take my little magnet 
get right on it, pull it out. That makes it handy. Ain't nothing worse than dropping screws down in the motors. Then it's ready to come out of there. It'll just rotate out on them gears, come right up out of there. And you've got that one final plug to unplug from your distributor right there. And it's easy to get to. It's upside down then, so you can unsnap it. And there you go. It's out of the truck. There it is. Now, you want to transfer your marks over from your old one that you marked to your new one. So you won't get it out of time. You see the little one scratched it there. Transfer your marks over where they're the same as the old one you marked. And you'll set this thing down in there. It's got pinion gears on it. So when you set it down in there, put it one tooth out. So when it rotates in, it'll rotate right in place. Well, you got it marked. Make sure it all, when it sits down in there, all your marks line up where it was. That way you won't be out of time. Once you get it in there, get it in place, mark. It's a little aggravating that you get it rotated in there. It's right just like the one you took out. And there you go ready to bolt back. Put your bolt back in there. And just run it down there and snug it good. Make sure you don't over tighten. You don't want to strip nothing. It's got specifications on torque settings, but you don't need that. Just snug it good. It's not going nowhere. Just don't over tighten it. Like I said, this is a half hour to an hour job. Just taking your time. It's nothing complicated. Easy to get to. Much better than changing plugs on it, I'll tell you that. Well, there you go. You've got your, line, your marks lined up the way you got it bolted. It, there it is. Bolted down. Now, the next thing I do... Just put my wires back on it. Get your plugs all plugged back up. A little aggravating getting your hands in some of these vehicles. This ain't no exception. But you plug your plugs back up. Just take your time. Everything plugged back up. There you go. Everything's back in place. Snug. Put your new distributor cap on. Put your bolts in. Line them up. Get them started. All right, you've got your new distributor cap on. Now, to make it simple, you not took no wires off the old cap. So you just transfer them where they are on the old cap to the new cap. No rocket science there. Just make sure they're snug in place. And you'll have it. There you go. You've got all your wars back in time in the sequence, the way they fire. So you're good there. Inspect your wires. Ain't nothing rubbing against nothing. Vibration. And there you go. Now we'll get in here and start this thing up. We just changed it. I already noticed the difference just running smoother. The RPMs is up good too, just to idle. And it's cold. It's cold though. Now I'm gonna rib it up here a little bit, and I'm gonna run it up here and high, hold it at a high RPM. He had holding right there. He's holding dead on that. 
It ain't sit there jumping up and down. Well, there you go. Now here it is when it's warm. We let it run for about 20, 30 minutes. Good, hot, normal operating temperature. You rib it up here and watch it now. This is when she really cuts out. But, it won't cut out now. Good and smooth running. Run it up here and hold it. Get a hold right there wherever you set it. No flushing around there, no missing. Holding right on it. Now you can see this old thing got 271,000 miles on it. It's been a good one. But that thing's wire out. Well, there you go, it's running just as smooth as, a, smooth as can be. That's what fixed this problem, but it can be so many different problems on this. But this is just one of the problems that it could be. But this was the ignition system from the symptoms that I had. It was the distributor. Evidently, that electronic module in that distributor is breaking down. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope this helps you if this is your problem. So, thanks for watching. God bless, and I'll see you next time.